Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, also, thank you so much for having me in this beautiful country. Uh, we've enjoyed seeing the scenery, eating the wonderful food. Uh, ate a little bit too much earlier for lunch. Uh, but it's been great. And also, thank you so much to the translators. They've been doing a fantastic job. Uh, so we're, we're going to be talking about NS user activity and series shortcuts. Um, when looking at this title, I'm sure that the first thing that comes into your mind is that Siri is the best technology ever, right? <laughs> okay, but seriously though, yes, Siri has some rough edges, we're all aware. But the true power in Siri comes in how your app can leverage voice commands to provide your user with a better experience and ultimately to make your features something that is easier for them to use. Now, if you're not already familiar with Siri shortcuts, Siri can do some awesome things. First, you can automate repeatable actions so that different features in your app can show up more easily for your user to access. You can tailor these interactions to your users so that different actions may show up for different users depending on what kind of logic you implement. And it makes it easier to engage with your app so that your users are able to see it in places they maybe didn't expect and with simply a tap or executing a voice command, they can jump straight into their favorite features. The primary way that we'll be implementing this is by using NS user activity. Apple defines this class as a representation of the state of your app at a moment in time. This is actually the same technology that's used behind handoff and multitasking. Uh, this is specifically used for uh, multiple purpose on your app, but it's used for taking the user back into your app. It's not really great for executing logic uh, in the background. So for a great presentation, if you're looking for one on how to execute actions in the background, check out Christina Multoon's Try Swift presentation titled, Let Them Say What They Want. She digs into the Ion Intent object and uh, does a very fantastic job. So we're all familiar with the phrase, hey Siri, I probably just activated a number of your phones. Uh, but it really is quite easy. A lot of people seem to think that implementing Siri shortcuts is this long convoluted process and it's, it's quite simple. And it is as easy as one, two, three. So step one, we activate or donate an NS user activity instance. Step two is we assign the voice command with Siri. And then step three is we simply handle the action. So for step one, we're going to look over how NS user activity relates with Siri. And we're also going to go over some of the customization that you can use to implement to make this a much better experience for your users. So we begin by creating an NS user activity instance, which we initialize easily using a string. The best practice right now is to append your bundle identifier with a unique word or phrase that has something to do with what you want to do. As you can see here, we're simply going to perform an awesome thing. You can set this up with minimal customization. As you can see, all we're doing is giving it a title. And the two most important steps are to set is eligible for prediction to true and to set the view controller's user activity property to the user activity that we created. I would like to take a quick moment to focus on these two lines because they're absolutely essential to the process. Setting is eligible for prediction to true makes it so that Siri can take this shortcut and make it visible to the user. And setting the user activity to our instance is what activates it, donates it, and sends it over to other services on the device. So with just these four lines of code, if we head over to our settings app, there's our shortcut. And if we tap on it, the user can already record an invocation phrase to trigger this action. Of course, it doesn't do anything cool yet, or anything at all, for that matter. Uh, but I hope you're getting excited about how easy it is to have gotten this far. 
Just four lines of code and we're already integrating with Siri. So there are a number of things that we can do to improve on this process. But we'll begin by importing our intents framework and setting a suggested invocation phrase. As you might imagine, this is simply something that we can point the user to, to say, this is a suggestion of what you might say to encourage this action. So it takes our bland, blank, clueless interface and makes it a little less convoluted. So now the user looks at this and they see you can say something like, get awesome. Okay, great. There's one more thing that we can do to make this easier to access for your users. And that is to set a property called make eligible for search. By setting this property to true, we're supporting spotlight search. So all your user has to do is pull down on the home screen and begin typing something related to the shortcut and it'll show up for them. It's really quite simple. Okay, cool. Now we still don't really know what this shortcut does. For that, we're gonna to need to import two other frameworks. The first is Core Spotlight, and the next is Core Services. These give us access to the CS searchable item attribute set and the KUT type item. The KUT type item is defined in Apple Docs as the generic abstract type identifier for most things, which is literally just a wild card. So, by using this, we can set the content description and the thumbnail data to give our shortcut a little more of a unique feel for the user. So we'll set this to shows you how awesome Siri is to give the user a little more of a defined example of what it might do. It's still a little ambiguous, but forgive me. So now, our previous screenshots look a little more unique. They set apart our shortcut from other shortcuts that might already be on the device, as well as other shortcuts within our own app, and we already have access to them, and we have an idea of what they might do. And they have an awesome icon. So that's it for step one. Now we have donated a user activity. Let's go ahead and get into step two, where we encourage the user to create a voice shortcut for it. And it really is pretty awesome. Apple provides a great API that does all of the work for you. So you can encourage your user to create a voice shortcut and have them save it all from within your app. To get access to it, we import the Intense UI in our view controller. This framework provides access to two classes. The first being the INUI Add Voice Shortcut button. And the next being the INUI Add Voice Shortcut View Controller. So we'll create our button, initialize with a style. You have your choice of white, which looks like this, black, white outline, or black outline. And as you can see, it looks quite nice and is actually the exact UI that Apple encourages you to use when adding shortcuts. And then you just set it up like any other UI button. It's worth noting you can only do this programmatically. So be sure to take auto layout into consideration when you do this. Then. Once it's all configured, we're gonna set up our view controller. So again, you see our INUI add voice shortcut view controller, which we get by providing an IN shortcut with our user activity instance. And then we can simply present it after having adopted the delegate protocol, which makes the interaction look a little something like this. So you can see our Add to Siri button here, which when tapped presents the same interface we saw in settings. 
So the user is able to record their voice command and save it, all without having to leave your app. Okay, that's it for step two. It really is that easy. With just a handful of code, we've been able to successfully create a shortcut, send it off to the other services, and encourage your user to create this voice shortcut and also make it accessible via search. Okay, so now Siri knows how to tell your app that there's been a shortcut activated, but your app still doesn't know what to do with it. So for that, we're gonna dive into step three. In this step, we ensure that we're ready to receive instructions from Siri and this is the point where you and your team are going to want to invest a little bit of time to decide what the best approach is on how to handle it. But there are two main paths that you need to cover. The first is when your app has been closed and needs to be launched. It'll be provided those instructions from Siri. In here, you go to an app delegate and then we're going to store the intent and then when your view controller is loaded, we can simply check if that value is there. The second path is if your app is already running in the background, you can simply, again, view controller, but then we're gonna just trigger a notification and allow your app view controller that's already running to receive it and send the logic. So for that, let's head over to our app delegate and look at the two functions that we need to implement. The first being your application did finish launching with options method, which you're all already using. As I've mentioned, this is gonna be triggered when your app needs to launch. In here, we're provided our launch options dictionary, and we check if it contains a value at the key for user activity dictionary, which we can simply cast as an NS user activity. Now this property contains um, the, uh, a user activity type, which is the same string that we used to initialize the activity with earlier. Once you have that, you simply handle the action. We'll get into the logic of handling it in a moment, but first let's take a look at our second path, which is in our application continue with restoration handler function, which you may not already be using. Now in here, we're already provided with a user activity instance. So again, simply pulling out the activity type string, we're able to handle the action. Now if you'll recall, donating your NS user activity object, object was necessary so that Siri was aware of your shortcuts. And these two functions, both of them are necessary for your app when the activity is sent back. As I've mentioned, you're gonna to wanna to spend some time planning how to handle the shortcut when it's been sent back to you. My personal recommendation is to simply use a manager class. In here, we have our singleton so that we can simply check if the value has been saved when it was launched. And in our did set observer, we'll also send off a notification in the case that your app is already running and you just want to trigger some logic. So now, we can take our few lines in our app delegate and implement the manager. And that's it. As you can see, we've covered both of our paths, going from the app delegate to either storing the intent or sending off a notification. So now, we need to go into our view controller. We'll start off by observing for a notification that an intent has been sent or an activity, and we'll call whatever logic you would like to use when that happens. Additionally, when the view loads, we wanna call that same logic anyway. As I've mentioned, you may have already saved that intent when your app launches, in which case you're not gonna be able to observe for a notification because it would have already sent. So to mitigate any issues with this, we're gonna implement some logic in our function itself. 
So what we do is we simply check if the intent that we've saved matches our local string for the awesome thing. And then we perform whatever logic we want. You do, do your thing here. So we're going to present an awesome thing view controller. It's also important to note that if you follow this method, you need to make sure you're setting your intent to nil so as to avoid any kind of false positives in the future or conflicting instructions. And that's it. We're done with step three. So with the logic that you've seen, the code that we've implemented so far, if you were to say something like, hey Siri, get awesome, it would look something like this. So there are a few caveats with this, but I hope you're excited about how easy this was. In 20 minutes, we've taken zero shortcuts, we've implemented Siri, and we've created a voice command. So I mentioned some caveats. There's a couple of weird things that you're gonna wanna be aware of. First is that during development, make sure you use nsuseractivity.delete all saved activities. The reason for this is that Siri tends to do some weird caching on the device. Before I implemented this, <laughs> someone's laughing because they know. <laughs> Before I implemented this, uh, we ran into some instances where our shortcuts just stuck around. We couldn't get rid of them. We tried overriding them. Nothing worked. Uh, so be aware of this. Also, make sure you take this out in production. The next weird thing is that you don't have access to all of your shortcuts, which to me felt like a glaring weakness. You should be able to just say, hey Siri, NS user activity, give me all of the shortcuts that my user has created from my app. You can't do it. So what you can do, and what I recommend, is to store all of the persistent IDs that your NS user activities come with so that you can maybe exchange them or trade them out for different activities later on. And of course, this is only available on iOS 12. So by using the pound available conditional, we can make sure that this is only going to the right devices. So to recap, we've donated an NS user activity instance. We've assigned a voice command from inside the app. And we've handled the action. So I encourage you all now to go add Siri shortcuts to your apps because as you've seen, it's just so dang easy. Everybody, thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure sharing the stage with other much smarter people than I am. Uh, please come say hi during office hours and uh, reach out to me over Twitter. And of course, my example project for this is available on GitHub.